So welcome everybody. Great to see you. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Uh, today is uh, the 22nd of September 2021. My name is Rob Payne and this is Come Up Home. Uh, now, I um, I shared this message uh, a couple of weeks ago with the guys at uh, Companionship, so I thought I'd just share it with everybody, because um, it's to do with, uh, well, let me get there, let me just start with this story before I tell you what the theme is going to be. Now, the famous English architect, Sir Christopher Wren, was um, supervising the construction of a beautiful new cathedral in London. Now, a local journalist thought it would be interesting to interview some of the workers. So he went to the site and found some of the most miserable looking people he could and asked them the question, what are you doing? Now, the first worker responded, I'm cutting stone for 10 shillings a day. Now, the second answered, I'm putting in 10 hours a day for this measly job. The journalist looked over and saw a man who had seemed, he seemed to have a bit of energy about him and seemed to be very happy about what he was doing. So he went to ask him, the same question, what are you doing here? The worker answered, I'm helping Christopher Wren construct one of London's greatest cathedrals. Now, oftentimes our outlook on life has much more to do with our joy than the actual things we are doing. And in those times, you know, when in those times when our circumstances are worse, you know, when things we're looking forward and things haven't quite gone as we hoped. You know, we can despise the situations we sometimes find ourselves in, but we can see it as an opportunity to do something great for God's kingdom. Now, in Philippians 4.4, 4, uh, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. The fact is, repeated it twice there. I think it's quite important. Now, Paul wrote this letter uh, to a church that he'd started in the city of Philippi, which has a home, it came, became home to a colony of retired soldiers. They became passionate about Paul's mission to preach the gospel to the Gentile world as he had done with them. They became big supporters of Paul. They were retired and you know could have sat back and enjoyed life, but they chose to join the mission to preach the gospel. This brought a lot of opposition, even hardship. Paul knew this and he appeals to his own life as an example of how to respond to hardship with joy. Throughout the whole palace guard that is right in the centre of Caesar's realm, Paul is boldly making a royal announcement that Jesus is Lord. Paul's desire is that the Philippians will gain the same confidence and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear, even if persecution and hardship come their way. Paul urges the Philippians to have the same servant attitude that Jesus had, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but humbled himself even to the point of death, all for the sake of others. I mean, the author of Hebrews had the same idea. Fix your eyes on Jesus, it says in Hebrews 12, 2 to 3, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne. Consider him who endures such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The joy set before Jesus, well, it was you and me. The hardship of the cross was nothing compared to the joy of the outcome, the salvation of our souls. He didn't complain or back out. He, knowing that the that the future glory of the task was going to happen when it was complete, all of that was worth the hardship that was happening now. So, whatever your circumstances are this week, make the choice to be about God's purposes within them. See your situation as a mission from God, and you'll find amazing joy in any circumstance. So what are we going to do as this is a communion meeting tonight, if you've got 
your bread and your wine. If you haven't, make sure you go and get it now. Let's go run and get those bits. You need some bread or some juice or some wine. And we're going to take communion together as we do every week. As we come to the communion part, uh, I want to encourage us with this proverb. some Proverbs 17.22, and probably a lot of you know this quite well. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The hardships of life can bring us down. But this proverb suggests a joyful heart is good medicine. And as believers, our hearts are full of joy or joy filled when we remember the love poured out into our hearts by the spirit as we think upon the goodness of God through the sacrifice of Jesus. And as I was putting these notes together, this song, as I said about, because I said about think upon and these, the words of these songs, which you will know most of you very well. Once again, I look upon the cross where you died. Now, I'm not going to sing it. You've heard me sing and you don't want to hear that. But so I'm going to read some of the words. I'm going to read the lyrics. And it says this, Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life and I'm in that place once again. And once again, I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. And once again, I pour out my life. So here we are in this moment, at this communion moment, thinking once again about the sacrifice of Jesus for the salvation of our souls and of humanity. Not only that, not only the sacrifice, the sacrifice he made for our salvation, which is beyond anything we'd ever imagine. But as I said on Sunday, he brings healing for our hurts, forgiveness for our failures, comfort in life's catastrophes and e energy for our everyday. So in this moment, let gratitude pour out as worship in our living out our lives for the gospel and let joy overflow. So let's get our, our bread or, or cracker or whatever you've got and let's give thanks. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the body broken. We thank you for what it means to us. That as we think about that sacrifice, the things that you did, that we may have those things, the freedom, the forgiveness, the healing. We just honour you right now as we remember those things and help us Lord, to remember to take that message to the world. Amen. Let's take our bread together. Hmm. And as we, if you get your wine or your juice, we just want to give thanks for the blood that was shed. Jesus' blood shed on that cross that meant we have freedom and forgiveness and we have salvation because of it. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for what it brings, this new covenant that we may receive from you in this new life, this joy that can overflow in every circumstance. So, God, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Spirit, we thank you. And we take this right now in honour of you and to remember you, Jesus. Amen. Let's take one. So, as we come to the end here, uh, I just want to encourage you and bless you. I want to speak this blessing over you. So, if you're watching this now with us, it's great to see so many faces joining us on Ring Central, or you're watching this later, or you're going to use this at a different point, I just want to say this, be blessed. Let your hearts not be troubled as you believe. Trust and follow Jesus throughout your days. Let the joy of the Spirit overflow from you to this hurting world and give you strength in every trial. Let the love of the Father comfort you as you lay down your life for the gospel of his Son. May you overcome every trial every circumstance with joy of the Lord as your strength in every season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I hope to see you all very, very soon. God bless. How great the chasm the lay between us how high the mountain 
I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name Into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows Of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ My living Sing hallelujah and hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Hallelujah, hallelujah Praise the one who set me free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Then came the morning That sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion declared the grave Had no claim on me Yeah, Then came the morning That sealed the promise Your buried body Begin to breathe, yeah. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declares the grave has no claim on me, yeah. Jesus, yours is the victory. Set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Jesus Christ, my living hope Jesus Christ, my living hope Lift up a shout of praise 